How's everyone? Good. I think Andy's coming later. I've never done one in person. Hi, everyone. Hi. <laughs> Sam, did you ever do one your rookie year? Did I ever do one my rookie year? Yeah. Uh, no. Oh, I guess you haven't. Yeah. yeah. I think it's muted. Yeah, you're muted there, so whenever you're ready, you press. Do I press space bar or the thing? Uh, you can just unmute. Okay. All right. Jason, want to kick us off? Yeah. Um, Sam, thanks for speaking with us. I um, wanted to ask a little about you know, last week. Albertine said there was kind of a, a look at a different formation tonight, more familiar 4-3-3. Three, three. Um, how do you think the team is maybe built to carry that into next year since this is kind of a weird game in terms of this season? Uh, yeah, I mean, I think from last year, most of this year we played a 4-3-3, and I think uh, it gets our best team out in the field, and it's the best uh, formation for us to be playing. Uh, we play our best. I think everyone's most comfortable with it. We know where people are going to be at certain points, and we know how to like move and rotate and help each other out. Um, so, yeah, I think last week, of course, um, it was a trial. Uh, and it didn't work out, and now we're back to our usual formation, and I think everyone just feels more comfortable with it, for sure, and I think it's something that has been solidified now. Mm -hmm. And then tonight against Houston, um, you know, a team that has been very good on the counter all year, tonight it seemed like they were willing to come out and set their lineup a little bit. How do you think you dealt with that collectively, given their, you know, their thinking playoffs, you guys are kind of, kind of a difficult game to sort of prep for? Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I think just like what you said, they uh, are built to counter, and I think they got us a few times for sure. Um, most of the second half, though, I think we did a pretty good job of just keeping our lines tight, going in, stepping up, and uh, winning the ball. And I think it's just like from the front, back, pressure on the ball, covering each other. Um, they definitely got at us a little bit in the first half of the second half. I think we cleaned it up for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think he brings a lot of really good energy, positivity, um, all of that. Uh, he's just a really good teacher, and I think um, at the time that he came in, we couldn't really make playoffs or anything like that. So I think it was – he's kind of the perfect coach to bring in just because we were learning technical, tactical, things like that, um, just to build for next year. And I think it was a good um, addition for the rest of the season. Yeah, I think that's a tough question. Um, it's hard to think about this season and be super positive just because um, of what we're piggyback backing off of from last year. Um, I think we had a lot of really good moments individually and collectively. Um, we just couldn't put it all together pretty much all season. Uh, I hate to say that we got unlucky, but I, I think we did, honestly. Um, and then we just – yeah, we got unlucky, and we it just like was a tough season overall. Um, couldn't really ever get going, and yeah. Mhm. Mm Andre, good. Yeah, Sam. Um, just wanted to get your kind of thoughts on in the off season you're going to be welcoming welcoming a new coach. So do you kind of like how just how how involved you expect to be in the selection of a new coach? Uh, honestly, probably not very involved. Yeah. Um, we trust our front office people and our captain to make that uh, decision. And we'll go from there. Hopefully it's decided sooner rather than later so we can get going and get training with whoever it may be. But, uh, yeah, I'll uh, find out when the rest of the girls do. Yeah. yeah. And you mentioned the season was pretty rough. Um, difficult season, weird season in a lot of ways. What, are your, like, what do you have in mind kind of now the off season to be able to kind of process it and kind of put it behind you? Is there anything specific that you're looking to do to kind of Um, I don't know. I, th I think that's a good question. I, I don't think we ever got much closer from last year. We all got home from the championship and had to go home for Thanksgiving whenever, like, properly celebrated. So I think kind of that, like, days carried into the beginning of this year. 
and um, now we just kind of went through this year. The beginning of the season was really tough, honestly, physically. Um, it was pretty back to back, and then just carrying through the rest of the season, it just felt it felt weird. And so, like trying to come to terms with like how all of that went um, is tough. I, I said it was a rough season, but like honestly, like emotionally and mentally, being with all of the girls, like you wouldn't have thought we were like in second to last place for most of the season. Like we've had a really good vibe and practices have been really great. Everyone is always so positive. Um, so I think it's really a really interesting dynamic and I, I honestly don't really know how I'm gonna process it from here on out. Thank you. Mm -hmm. What did you make of Houston's pressure on the offensive side towards the back line? Uh, I think it was um, on and off. Sometimes they would come, sometimes they wouldn't come, and it was just dependent on how quick we played if we were going to break their press or not. Um, towards the end of the game, it was pretty chaotic. Actually, most of the game it was pretty chaotic, but that's kind of how they like to play. Um, yeah, it was pretty just on and off pressure, yeah. That's all. Thank you. Mm -hmm. have fun together um like I've said uh it was a rough season but you wouldn't have known it being in the locker room we all really enjoy each other's company we enjoy playing with each other every single day um but yeah just having fun one last go around until next season Sam I, I you just mentioned you know not being sure how to exactly process the year just yet um what are you going to do for the next few weeks here with um you know I imagine the plan was playoffs and now that's kind of not in place what are your what are your plans for the offseason basically uh relax and travel yeah yeah for Where the most going? part uh all around i'll yeah. travel to europe maybe around the u.s all that good jazz cool. mm -hmm. um i guess what do you personally want to get better at for next year because this is the team your success um that's a tough question. I, I think like a little bit of everything from a leadership standpoint. I think like I have stride, a lot of strides to make. Um, technically and tactically, there's just a lot of things to like hone in on. Um, yeah, just like honestly a little bit of everything. <laughs> All right. And I guess I know you had a play, I guess, I think it was early in the second half and you cleared away a ball. I don't know what it was called. Um, the gas and you kind of cleared the ball away before they got a shot off. What was kind of going through your mind um, to get into the play or to get into that? Uh, please don't score. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Anything else? <laughs> that, that's it. Please don't score. <laughs> I'm a pretty simple player. <laughs> please don't score. <laughs> All right. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Sam. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks, Sam. everyone. And we should have Andy Sol. Jason, I hear you go. Albert team, thanks for speaking with us. Um, to ask a little last week, obviously there was the look at playing out of the back three tonight. Um, more customary 4-3-3 for three, three for the group. Sam said that she feels like they were more comfortable. What did you see playing out um, against a team that plays like the dash out of the more familiar system, so to speak? Uh, it was definitely different than last week, and uh, I thought we had some success with it. We were able to get in behind them because uh, Sam and both Amber were able to play boss in behind. Um, it was something they're used to. They've been training at it at this season, I mean, for the last few weeks. And uh, unfortunately, it didn't go our way because I thought the team deserved a lot more. We had chances early on. We could have put them away, but we didn't. And then, uh, you know, a few plays that could have been called PK, maybe, maybe not. We'll, we'll have to look at the film and we'll see how that goes. Um, but, uh, you know, they're just much more comfortable in the back four. But for next season, they're going to have to be able to play in a back three and sometimes in a back five, depending on the, the game and the situation. Uh, but, you know, time uh, will help with that. Mm -hmm. uh, just in a, maybe an overall look at um, your time coaching the team, um, how much do you think the group progressed in the last, what, five, six weeks? So... I had this conversation earlier. The, oh, the question was, uh, how much did the, a group progress? I was, and I came here, and we had eight days that I was able to work with them. Mm 
before our next game. So we were actually on the field training, and we from the first week to the second week, I saw quite a bit of a difference in how they carried themselves, the positivity, the energy, um, and really applying what we were asking them to do. Then, as the pro level is, then you get on the road, and you're not no longer really training the team. It's just now maintaining, making sure they're fresh, and going over some set pieces. Uh, when we were in Kansas City, we were playing. We were practicing at their practice facility with cameras everywhere, and the coaches were looking out from the window. So we're like, okay, well, we're just going to do some light stuff. Um, and then we came back, and they had tired legs, so we gave them a couple days off. So I trained with them on Thursday. So there wasn't much training in the last two weeks, but the first eight days. Um, I'd like to think we saw a little bit of an improvement on uh, just uh, our possession, uh, but more so the energy. And then we're trying to mix it up. Are we going to be dangerous? Um, are we possessing and just going sideways? One of the things that I asked them of today, which was very important, is can we get in behind their defense? Let's make runs. Let's be dangerous, something we didn't do in Kansas City. But today, you saw early on, we were making runs and we were a threat for them. And uh, that's where I'm just, I'm very pleased with the players, their attitude, their mentality, they're taking the information in and they're applying it. And then just, I guess it's been the entire season, right? They're just unfortunate, just unlucky whether, I mean, not, but they're all saying it's been the entire season that way. Last year, I think they were, got a little bit fortunate and, and ended up winning, and this year, kind of everything's going against them. Um, but it's, it's uh, a very good group, and I think they're gonna, be, they're gonna have uh, an outstanding season next year. It's a great organization, great leadership, and uh, they just need to forget about the season, take some time off, and then come out and do some great things. Sorry for the long answer. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome. Especially in a game where like the dash is playing you know, possibly the home crowd, mm -hmm. and you guys are going to have a contention. Like, what does that say about this team? Same thing I've been saying all along. Their mentality has been outstanding. We were down one nothing, right? We had chances early on. One nothing. You could have just said, "Hey, it's the last game," uh, and packed it in. But no. We started, continued to play in our game. We got the goal. Uh, we had chances in the second half. Then we went down, and we still were creating chances in that late in the second half. So the mentality of the players has been absolutely outstanding. I couldn't ask for anything more. Um, I've been in teams when I've played or coached where it's just like you've got nothing to play for, and sometimes players just you know, kind of stop and go, they're going through the motions. You can't say that about any player out here. Uh, we were fighting to the end, so a lot of credit to them. Yeah, so coming in as the interim coach so late in the season, um, what were some of the goals you laid out for the team and do you feel like you've achieved them? So some of the goals that I laid out were changing the mentality, the culture a little bit of just uh, believing in themselves, uh, this kind of positive energy. Uh, I'd like to think that we achieved that. I mean, uh, it shows when I s I'm talking to the players after the uh, practices, after the game, and uh, it's uh, it's a talented group. They need to believe in themselves. I think they've lost a little bit of that belief and, and confidence. And uh, my message to the team after the game was, look, you've got to believe all the way to the end. You're here for a reason. And... Uh, play with that confidence, play with that freedom. Obviously, you have to understand your roles and responsibilities, but you could see, and even in today's game, there were players that were just kind of holding back from playing that ball that was on or to switch it, or they're just not comfortable of, hey, I can s turn and get the ball and switch the point of attack, but they just want to play the way they're facing, and that comes with a little bit of lack of confidence. Uh, and I, th I like to think that, yes, we got better, in that with some of the players, but now it's can we do, can they all do it? And when it all comes together, then it can be something special. Um, but their belief is, is there, and that's something that I don't think they had from the beginning. Yes? Um, what's it like coaching players? I obviously, am, well, I guess, how old did they do, but what's it like coaching the players that were called up for the U.S. Women's National Team? Well, it's, uh, it's an honor to coaching them. They're some of the best players in, uh, in the world, not just the country. Uh, so they bring uh, just uh, this mentality and uh, attitude of wanting to be the best, and that's also passed on to the rest of the players. So um, it was just a, a pleasure. And sometimes you just don't know what to expect from national team players. But 
all the national team players on this group every day at practice. They're out there, they're training, they're working just as hard as everyone's. There's no prima donnas, as I call it. It's just that they have the right mentality, and I can see why they're on the national team, and they've got a very bright future. So it's exciting. Marcus, what did you see from their performances tonight, at least all of them? I guess Kimi Robin didn't have a shot, but she was all over the field. <laughs> so, so everyone everyone had like some some record based in statistics or just dominance on the field. So what did you see from yeah, well, Trinity, like you said, she's all over the field. I mean, it'd be nice to play Trinity at right back, center back, uh, right forward, left forward, uh, everywhere, because she's just a competitor, and she created so much for us through the PK. Uh, Hatchie up top was doing a very good job today of holding the ball and connecting with her midfielders. And the plan was to go a little bit more direct, and she was getting a um, – flicking it on and creating opportunities for us. And then uh, Sanchez was making runs in behind the defense uh, and creating opportunities. She had that chance early on that Jane made a great save on. Um, at the end, you know, she's getting still making those runs, got into the box, can take players on. Um, so, you know, they all have those qualities. And uh, it, was, uh, it was just a pleasure watching them. But um, in the other role, so I, I, I do coach. Okay. I, I coach. I've been coaching nonstop for 25 okay. years. Okay. And, uh, oh, I am, but I love coaching. So I'm on the field, and I coach two teams, uh, a little bit younger than um, the pros. Uh, but even when I coach in the WPS, um, in my contract, I had to coach youth. And I'm like, I'm sorry, I can't leave that because I enjoy it so much. So sorry if I'm digressing. I would coach Marta and some of these great players, and I would drive an hour and coach seven-year-olds and eight-year-olds on the same day, which is pretty crazy. Um, so the itch, yeah, I, I, I'm a competitor, and these are the best, some of the best players in the world, and it's a uh, very high level, so it's a little bit different than the youth game. So obviously when I get back into this, it's like, ah, I miss it so much, and uh, I'd, I'd love to stay. Uh, this is an incredible group, but I've got something at home that I just can't. Um, and in this, it, this is a joke, but my wife, it's true, she came here, not for just for my last game, but to take me home because she was worried that I was going to stay. <laughs> and she made it very clear. I'm like, no, I, I love it here that much. I mean, these players are just such a pleasure to work with in the organization and uh, what Michelle and Mark are building. I'm like, and I would tell her every day, and she's like, uh-oh. And then everyone's like, you better go back over there and get him. And that's why she's here, not just to watch my last game. It's like, you're getting on a plane and coming back. Um, so what I will take out of it, out of it is just, uh, yeah, just that level of play is just that competitiveness. It's I miss it. That's the best part of it. Thank you. I appreciate that. Your wife answered my second. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes. So I just want to say you coach in the WPS. What would you say are some of the biggest differences between your experience working with athletes and now with the WWE college and also with how One of the biggest difference is the support and uh, the fans, the stadiums. Uh, I remember when we would travel, there would be maybe a thousand fans, twelve hundred at best. I was at uh, you know, just the first game that we were here. It was outstanding. I was blown away, right? The support and the, and the community gets behind their team. Uh, the stadiums are completely different. Then I traveled my first road trip as um, L.A. and I'm like. These fans are crazy, and it was a Wednesday night, and I think we had 16,000. So the game has evolved quite a bit, and just uh, uh, the support and the ownership. Obviously, here in, uh, in Washington and some of these new teams and owners coming in, uh, they're really invested for the long term, and uh, this is going to be uh, a special time to be playing on the women's uh, side. Uh, as far as the players, it's great players are great players no matter in what era. Right, so I don't think much has changed. Um, I think uh, maybe it's a little bit more athletic right now than what I remember. 
Uh, and then now if you can find that, the athleticism and then just uh, it just an understanding of playing a possession game and you put it together, then that's when uh, teams I think will be special. Uh, but otherwise, yeah, I don't think it's, nothing's much has changed with the players, but the support and the fans and the facilities and uh, it's it's fun playing. That's why I also miss that now. It's like wow, this is this is a good time to be in the league. Yeah. Forget about this season. <laughs> That's what I would tell them. They, they won a championship. So uh, it's just forget about the season. Th it, uh, in sports, when things aren't going well, it seems like everything just kind of goes against you. I experienced that in the WPS with the first, uh, the fir in the first year. It's like, gosh, you're just not getting the PKs or it hits someone's leg and you're getting own goals. So nothing goes ag um, in your favor. And it's like, We've got a quality side. Let's forget about this season. Uh, really concentrate in preseason. That's going to be one of the most important things is preseason. This is our identity. This is who we are. Um, this is how we're going to play and have a very, a very good understanding of that. And then as the season goes, then you make little adjustments here and there. And that's w whether it's a, a formation change from a 3-5-2 to a 4-4-2 to a 4-3-3. But most importantly is understand who you are and play to your strengths. Right, because sometimes we get caught in like, oh, I have to solve every problem. I have to uh, change for the other team. I'm a big believer. I'm like, no, when you've got a team this talented, let's uh, let's have other teams worry about us. So that's really uh, what I would uh, offer to uh, the organization. Thanks. Yeah. All right. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, our team. Thanks, thank you. Thanks. Yes. Um, I think Albertine is a very like positive and energetic person, and he's very consistent, and that rubs off on you. And like we spend a lot of time together, so um, yeah, that's it spreads and it's contagious. So your energy, we we say that to each other all the time. It's like your what you bring is contagious, whether it's positive or negative. So um, having him lead us was really helpful. And kind of looking ahead, um, this is a big off season for the club, and I know um, you and Aubrey and Tori have been involved in a lot of decisions around the club. Um, what are you maybe looking for as a priority for the direction of the club when it comes to the next coach and other, other areas that the team needs to progress in? I'm looking forward to trusting Mark and having him make all the tough decisions. <laughs> um, and and obviously he'll ask for feedback and opinions and here and there, but um, I'm, I'm trusting him and that I can shift my focus more to playing and um, being the best player I can be for the team. Um, so that is what I'm looking forward to the most. I don't think that's been an issue um, before how much were you as leaders having to sort of fill in on that part? Um, a lot. And we, I mean, I'm, I'm grateful to be a part of a club where, like, my opinion is valued and also where um, I'm trusted by my teammates to get their feedback and present it and share it. Um, but it can be very heavy and um, especially when things are difficult and it's a it's a fine line between taking ownership and accountability for things that are yours and then probably for things that are not and I think sometimes um, I personally have struggled with like taking on too much or like feeling that um, things are my responsibility which I'd always rather defer to that than saying like oh it's not you know not my fault or problem or anything um but yeah it's definitely 
and it's again it's something I'm grateful for and I think I'm learning a lot from it but um, I think there's a balance and I'm looking forward to learning in a different way and that would actually probably be by observing Mark and how he's going to lead along with Michelle. So of course playing with the national team, but in terms of like this, this season with the spirit, mm -hmm. um, what are your thoughts on what you might do to kind of process this season as we kind of get ready to go into the next one? I know it's kind of just ended, but. Yeah. I haven't really had like any space to process much. So, um, and like you said, we're going to camp um, tomorrow and then there's also another camp in November. So I feel like I won't really be able to process that much until after then, just because that will be my, my focus. Um, but mid-November, I'll probably um, have some more space and time to process things out. Because um, then it will be time to get back to work and go again. Yeah. Um, and I guess my focus on this game, mm -hmm. uh, specifically what were, <laughs> last year, you know, you guys kind of played spoiler to Houston. Was that kind of in your mind, your approach to this game, or did you kind of ignore it because they already yeah, I think last week that was kind of my hope and focus and the teams as well, and we wanted to do the same thing. Um, and then last night they had clinched. We didn't really talk about it before the game. We just wanted to, um, like Albertine said, like play for each other, put on a good show, um, go for things, be aggressive, um, and make it interesting and um, take pride in like what we did. So uh, I think he did a good job of, of shifting our focus before the game to that. Mm -hmm. Scored the penalty to level the game, and up until that point, when you did score before that, what did you make of the team's response to going down? I thought we responded pretty well. Um, I think it was a tough time to concede because I think we actually had a lot of, maybe I'm misremembering it, but I thought we had a lot of momentum before we got scored on. Um, and I think instead of getting deflated about that, I thought we stayed consistent and that belief to come back and level it was really strong. Um, and I, I wish we could have done it again, but. And, oh, well. oh, I'm sorry. No, you're good. I had nothing else. But you said it was, you said you couldn't do it again, but mm -hmm. again, the pressure was there, the mm -hmm. ideas were there. So do you attribute it to the unluckiness that we've been, that we've been hearing? And unlucky is <laughs> a big word? Or is it also, was it also a credit to Houston's defense too, or a combination of both? Yeah, I think it's a little bit of everything. I think we could have – I thought we had a lot of fight. I thought we could have had a little more composure in the final third, like myself included. I was, like, so worried about winning battles that I probably could have been a little more patient um, to get behind or connecting a little more. Um, so I think that could have been better. Sorry, I'm, like – I feel like my voice is wavering, but I'm just really cold. Um, <laughs> and um, – Sorry, your question was, could you say it again? Yeah, sure, that's fine. It's just about what it, what you thought, the the fact that you couldn't get oh. the second goal, what, what you attribute that to, because the fight and everything. Was yeah, there. it was there, and like it, it doesn't always go your way, and I think I said this earlier, is like you create your own luck. Um, so one is unlucky, but you can't always blame luck, but I think even though it was not our day, like I think we still feel – proud about the effort we put in and that's really important so um hopefully next year creating some new luck thank you mm -hmm. yeah so coming off last year's championship season um do you think the successes of last year kind of played any factor into this season's struggles yes i think um I'm trying to figure out how I want to say this. Um, <laughs> I think that there were a lot of external motivations last year. Um, and every week there was something. I don't even know if I've said this before, but it's like every week there was something for us to like bond over and get fired up about and unite around, um, which is very a very powerful force, but it's not sustainable. Um, and so I think we felt like 
that was just going to happen for us. Like, because we had a very similar group, we had a very strong group, like, oh, it's just going to happen for us. Um, and I think we unfortunately like approached things that way sometimes. And I don't think our standard for ourselves was, was high enough from the onset. Um, and I don't think we laid a strong enough foundation um, in those standards. Um, so I don't think we got like complacent, but I think, I don't know, we just didn't have, I haven't figured it out. I'll process it and hopefully <laughs> get back to you. But um, I do think like in this, we see it all the time in the league. It doesn't matter how much talent you have or anything. If you don't show up all game, every game, and that translates to how you train, if you don't show up every day in training and that it builds strong habits, like you're going to get punished. The league is too good for that. So um, I think looking forward to next year, starting with a clean slate, laying a brand new foundation to build for a longer, more successful season. Mm -hmm. All right, Reese. Oh. Oh, go ahead, go ahead. Okay, I just had, um, I know you're going to play with the U.S. and you all said that you're going to the U.S. Women's National Team. So what are you most looking forward, excited to about doing that? Um, definitely excited about Wembley, um, how quickly it's sold out. The energy is going to be insane um, and playing against, you know, a super strong opponent who just had a really great summer. So I think it's going to be a fantastic test, and I'm really excited about that. Um, yeah. Curious to know, what's it like also going with, like, four of the other your teammates? Today? Yeah, um, it's obviously really fun, and um, – that's a, it's a great thing about the national team, getting to play with people that you've played with and against all the time, and you just mix it up. So um, definitely enjoy seeing some familiar faces, but we also enjoy playing with other people too. It's good to just change up the environment. So. All right, Jason wraps up. Um, kind of on the, the same note of this trip coming up to Europe, um, I'm sure you're aware of what's at least some of what's going on with Spain. Mm -hmm. um, I was wondering if you had any thoughts that you maybe could share at this stage. Um, I know it's a complicated situation where they named the roster anyway mm -hmm. after 15 players said they won't finish either. Um, just any thoughts that you were comfortable with sharing on playing that game as a national team against them? I am not prepared for that question. Um, I haven't heard anything. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm sure the, oh God. Um, but yeah, I, I'm sure that as players, we'll talk about it together when we're all together and um, see what we can do to support those players who um, spoke up and spoke bravely and probably spoke truthfully. Like there's very rare that um, players would take that strong of a stance without very, serious allegations we've been a part of it we've seen it so um we obviously believe them we obviously support them um and we'll figure out the best way to do that together all right thank you everybody thank you, Andy. Thank you, Andy. did you have one sorry sorry um so like as a captain looking at everything that you guys went through this year um the rookies we didn't get to see a ton of time for everyone especially compared to last year mm -hmm. Yeah. Kind of excel. Do you want any of the players who you're excited about looking towards like next season who you want to oh, like, man. come on or have like that spark that you think are going to get kind of just more attention or we should keep an eye out for because they're going to be huge in the club? That's a good, a really good question because. Like you never know what someone's going to do when they get the opportunity. Um, and I think I wish we had done that sooner and say like a challenge cup, for example. Um, but there's honestly, you could look across our whole, I don't really have a great answer for you, honestly, because you could look across our whole roster and every day like training is competitive. People are having like a lights out day. Um, and again, I'm glad I don't have to make those decisions. So um, I always think like that's probably such a hard job as a coach just to pick the 11, pick the 18, pick the 20. Um, 
So very proud of every single one of the teammates I've had this year, um, some who never saw the field and some who saw every minute, like Sam Staub. So, um, yeah, there'll be definitely exciting people in the future. Mm -hmm. Cool. Thanks, guys. Thank you, Andy. Thank you. We'll see you all.